Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 125 residents interpreted this case of Fournier's gangrene as one of 65 cases during an eight-hour simulated on-call shift, with a median score of two out of 10 and an overall average score of 3.59 out of 10. Overall, the average number of points lost out of 10 to observational discipline was 5.9. At the same time, 0.5 points were lost due to interpretive errors on the part of the residents. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 23% of residents produced effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be an F or a D. In this most missed case, 67% of residents produced reports with critical errors. This next study is on a male who presented to a, an emergency room with scrotal swelling and discoloration. A scrotal ultrasound with Doppler imaging was performed. The initial image we're looking at is a side-to-side -side view of the right and left testicle in a sagittal plane. And we noticed that both the right and left testicular parenchyma looks very similar. There are echogenic areas which are small in both testicles. And these represent little areas of calcium or microlithiasis. The remainder of the parenchyma is isochoic and normal. We want to draw your attention to the fact that there's a very prominent area of echogenicity in the anterior scrotal wall with dirty shadowing on the right. And there are some areas of less prominent echogenicity without the shadowing on the left. These are concerning for areas of error, and we'll need to look at this as we do, as we go through the remainder of the images. Again, right testicle, areas of microlithiasis, but otherwise unremarkable, small reactive or physiologic hydrocele, echogenic areas in the anterior wall concerning for air. I want to continue to see these areas as we go through the right hemiscrotal region. They're more prominent medially. Dirty shadowing. The epididymis looks all right. Again, we see more of these areas. And this is a particularly uh, good picture of extensive echogenic foci with shadowing in the midline scrotum. The epididymis on the right looks all right. Going to the left, we see a similar appearing testicle with microlithiasis, some reactive fluid or a reactive hydrocele, scrotal wall thickening, no evidence of increased echogenic foci with shadowing at this image. As we continue, though, we see some edema in the scrotal wall on the left. And there is a echogenic focus or area with some shadowing medially. And we see more of the same. And here we see a nice picture medially of air in the anterior scrotal wall. Going to the color Doppler imaging, we see that there's flow, which is the same in both testicles. So there's not any evidence of torsion here. Again, the parenchyma is pretty similar with areas of microlithiasis. So our impression would be in somebody with air in the anterior scrotal wall, Fournier's gangrene, that should be the only thing you think about unless the patient's had some type of operative procedure recently. This is a emergent acuity. This demands an immediate call to the ER physician or if the urologist is involved, an immediate call to the urologist. This patient needs to be on their way to the OR for debridement. The microlithiasis, there is some debate as to whether or not this is a precursor or a marker for uh, testicular cancer, uh, but that's not this patient's immediate problem. That can be followed up on later images or studies.